So here we are. We're talking about renovating our minds. You guys ready to continue to get back in that space to do that renovation? <clears throat> in the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, likening the renovation of our mind or changing the way we think to my office, which I worked on and had remodeled. And there were two purposes for that office. Number one, it was the ministry for whatever, studying the word, and also for worship, for the music, and so forth. But I needed a lot of help. I needed professionals to help me, but there are things I needed had to do. Likewise, in our minds, we need help. We need the word of God. We need help, but there's things that God does, and there's things that we need to do ourselves. <clears throat> Amen? And last week, I had mentioned that you are, well, you and I, we're a lifetime renovation project for Jesus. We are a lifetime rev renovation project. You know, we look at our home. We started painting last week, and I want to thank my children and Jacob helping me paint the living room. But, you know, it's going to be, a, it's going to be forever to, to, to do a renovation of the home. It's the same with our minds. It's a lifetime renovation project, and Jesus has got you. All right. God is renewing. He's restoring. He's refreshing. Amen. He's empowering us with his word. And I just want to encourage you. You got to stay the course. Look at your neighbor and say, stay the course. All right. Got to stay the course. Follow God's timing in all situations. Amen. Check this out. Jesus said before he entered heaven, what did he say? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay, so this process of renewing our thinking, renewing our minds is a lifetime. It's for a lifetime. We're not going to get it tomorrow. You're not going to get it all in 10 years. It's a lifetime process. Amen? <clears throat> Amen. Let's read the scripture that we've been reading all month, Ephesians 2.10. Let's read that with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All right? So God is working on us, renewing our minds, renewing our hearts, amen, for his good works. There's a purpose in that. Let me just, again, begin by asking you this question, what are your fears? What are your fears? I want you to write that down. What do you fear the most? Honestly, just write that down on the side in your notes. <clears throat> what are your fears? What do you fear the most? We all have got something. I can't be the only one. Amen? We all have fears in some form or fashion. God is the expert of fears. He knows how it operates in us. He knows that we have in us, created in us, this mechanism of fear. All right? It's the reaction that God already created in all human beings as really a part of preservation. Part of, you know, saving yourself, really. Having this, that type of fear is not wrong. And sometimes we think, oh man, I, how come I'm so fearful? No, it's a, it's a mechanism. All right? When somebody yells, shark, when I'm swim, surfing, guess what happens to me? Guess what happens? I'm like, ah! Right? Right? I've experienced that how many times? I never get tired of telling this story. Surfing and seeing a tiger shark swim past at almost like lightning speed, breaking the water with his fins sticking out and his tail. And I could see the stripes on his back down at Eva Beach. I was the person that said, shark. It was like slow motion, shark. And my buddy on the other side was like, ah. Right? That kind of fear, just get, it's, it, it's in us. It's a pre preservation. It, it's there. It, it, it's a, we have this reaction. Amen? There is another type of fear which can be very overpowering. Okay, this is that, that fear is a little different from this fear I'm talking about than can overpower you. 
from really from moving forward, from moving in what God desires for you. All right? I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy 1. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles or you get your notes. Little context. The Apostle Paul, he's writing here and again, he never knows when he's going to die. I mean, basically, he's writing God-inspired word to the churches and to people. And every day, he never knows if he's going to be taken out and beheaded. And he writes to Timothy, and Timothy is like his son. And he says, Timothy, I'm praying for you. I remember you. I remember when I laid my hands upon you. I want you to stir up that gift of my laying of my hands. He's saying, what, what you have in you, stir it up. How many of you guys know that you got to stir it up sometimes in you? Amen? You need to stir up what God has already deposited in you. All right? And that's what he's saying. I want you to stir up the gift that is in you. All right? Because guess what? Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to preach the gospel. Don't be ashamed to stand up for what is true. And he knows because they're killing Christians. And you know what? That's happening today, isn't it? Isn't that happening today? Isn't, it how, isn't that evil? We got ISIS killing Christians. We got killings in our schools, right? Killing Christians. Evil. And what happened in Paris was... Just, yeah, terrible. Terrible. And then there's this fear that goes out among the community. Now I want you to pull you back to Timothy's time. Timothy's time. They were killing Christians. His leader was man, Paul, that taught him. Never knew when he was going to die. And he says this scripture right here, 2 Timothy 1, 7. And I want you to read this with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul understood what this fear was, a spirit of fear. This is that debilitating fear. This is a fear that would hinder you from doing what God wants you to do. To progress, to move, to receive, to share. He understood that God has given us the power. Say the power. Look at your neighbor and say, say the, the power. Okay. He has given us the power in the Holy Spirit. Right? Right? To love. He's given you the power. And we talked about loving the unlovable at the beginning of the month. He's given us the power to what? Love. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but the power to love. Right? And have a sound mind. That is self-control. The Greek word would say self-control. Okay? The power to love and have self-control. To have wisdom. The power to overcome fear. So how do we overcome fear? I want you to think about your fears right now. Are your fears the one like the shark or is it something that's debilitating right now that you're afraid to move on? How's about those guys that were bitten by sharks lately in Hawaii? Is that crazy? I, I think every one of them said, I'm going to go back in the water. Didn't they say that? Even that 10-year-old kid, I'm not afraid, I'm going to go back in. That's amazing. But for some, it would hinder you, right? Like, no maze. It's amazing to me. How to overcome fear. You confront fear with your faith. You confront the fears that you have with your faith. Say, my faith. Okay, whatever you fear right now, whatever's going on that seems to pull you or hinder you, you confront that fear. You have to confront it. 
Okay? You can't shy away from it. You have to confront it with your faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Can you read this with me? Ready? One, two, three, go. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance of something that you hope for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is like a title deed. You know what a title deed? If you own property, you have a deed to that property. Amen? You have a piece of paper. It's likened to that. That's my proof. That's my evidence. Right? When they ask me, who owns that land? Whose name is it under? It's mine. I have evidence. Here's my piece of paper. That's your faith. That's your faith. All right? When there's fear coming at you, that's my faith. That's my evidence. I have faith. If you go on an airline, when you go up to the ticket counter, they ask for your confirmation number. Right? That's your proof. That's like your faith. It is the evidence. Right? They can't say, no, I'm, you're not on the flight. No, I have it right here. Amen? That's your faith. Your title deed. Your confirmation. Romans 12.3 says this. I want you to read this with me also. Ready? One, two, three, go. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Everyone has a measure of faith. When someone tells you from now on, you have no faith. That is incorrect. Amen? When I tell you, you have no faith, what are you going to tell me? You're wrong, pastor. Right? You have no faith. And you're going to say, uh-uh, pastor. You're wrong. You're wrong. See, Jesus spoke this. He said, you of little faith. He told his disciples when they were fearful, when the storm when they were on a boat, he said, you of little faith, but they have faith, right? You may have little faith, but you can have great faith as Jesus spoke. Amen? You can have great faith. All right? So, what areas of your life do you have little faith? You find yourself going, man, I have little faith here. What areas of your life do you feel like, man, I have great faith? I was thinking about that. And maybe I'll share it with you. I feel like I have great faith for people. <laughs> I have great faith for people. James, I can have great faith for you. If you got anything you need to do, dude, I have great faith. I have faith in God like crazy for you. You need a house, I have great faith. Right? You need something, I have great faith for people. I have great faith there. You know where I have little faith? For myself. For myself. I can have the biggest faith for people. And I always tell them that. I say, I have more faith for you. And that's where we, that's what we tend to deal with. Faith in ourselves. Amen. So where are you? You have little faith in areas and you have great faith in others. Amen. And you can. So, you face fears with your faith. Number two, you support your faith with the knowledge of God's word. Your title deed, that's my faith. How do you support that? The word of God. Say the word of God. How can you have faith in nothing? Right? You have faith. You have the substance of faith. No one can tell you you cannot have faith, but you have to support that faith. You have to support what you believe. Amen? You need to support that. And it's the word of God. The more you fill your mind with the word of God, amen, the greater your faith will become. The more you filled your mind, amen, with the word of God, the greater faith you'll have. Amen? The greater faith. You know, way back when, when I... Um, first learned about giving to the Lord and tithing, <laughs> I had tiny faith. I had tiny faith. My faith was so tiny. It was like, huh, what are you talking about? Giving. And I was used to think like, man, no, okay. I'll, 
you know, and I've just learned the word. I've learned how that works. I've learned how that deposited into my mind till I have such great faith. I'm not even afraid of finances. You ask my wife. She's like, are you crazy? Oh, no, I'm not crazy. Are you really crazy? I'm not crazy. I have faith. I have great faith that God is the provider of all things. For me, for you. I have even greater faith for you. Amen? You know that God can provide for you? Do you know that you don't have to worry about anything? Amen? You, we just have to trust in his word. We just have to do what the word of God says. Amen? And it will come. It will come. Amen? But I support it with the word. I've learned it with the word. Amen? The more you fill your mind with, the greater your faith becomes. So let's look at this scripture in Isaiah. Isaiah 41. This word is for God's people of that day. But I, it travels down to us to the, till today. Can you read this scripture with me? Isaiah 41.10. Ready? One, two, three, go. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. First of all, I want you to just look at this verse. God's going to use his right hand. Amen? Obviously, he's a right-hander. He's not a lefty. He's a righty. So all you guys with right hands, you guys are pretty tough. Lefties, I don't know about you. Nah, just joking. Joking, joking, joking. Wow, you guys are really serious this morning. Jeez. Wow. Just joking. God is going to use his what? Right hand. The most power. The knockout punch. Amen. I will lift you up with my right hand. Amen. This term, God's right hand, is a prophetic word. It refers to the Messiah whom is given the power and authority to subdue his enemies. This is a prophetic thing. It's a prophetic word. Which shall come to pass. Psalms 110.1 uh, says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Psalms 118.16, the Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand, ha hand has done mighty things. Amen? God's going to lift his people up with his powerful right hand. Amen? My dad always taught me in boxing, this is the jab and then this is the knockout punch. God has the knockout. He uses everything he's got for his people. Amen? Everything he's got for his people. It's a prophetic word. Let's turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. So this prophetic word is going out and speaks about God's right hand. I will lift you up. Amen? Amen? Here's Jesus now. Jesus has been arrested. I want you to see this picture. Jesus has been arrested. They're mocking him. They even blindfold him. And they strike him on the face. Okay? Jesus is blindfolded. They strike him on the face. And they say to Jesus, they mock him and say, prophesy to us. Tell us who hit you. Wow. Wow crazy isn't that can you imagine that Jesus maybe even tied blindfolded and they're striking him on the face and saying prophesy tell us who hit you 67 verse if you are the Christ tell us he said to them if I tell you you will by no means believe. And if I also ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. 69. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they said to him, are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, you are rightly say that I am. Here's your title deed, people. Here's your title deed. Here's your faith. Here's your proof. 
Jesus is the son of the living God. He is on the right hand of God. Amen. Jesus is the power to lift you up. Amen. He will lift you up. Jesus is the word to fill your mind, to disperse all fears from you. Amen. And overcome any storm, even if you're in the middle of it. Amen. He is there. Even when you face giants, he is there. He is on the right hand. Jesus is the right hand. Amen. The word and the power of his spirit that allows you to trust in God. If God is for us, who is against us, guys? If God is for you, who is against you? No one. No one. No one. But we need to stand in that truth. Amen. The Bible says all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How we overcome. Number one, you overcome fear with your faith. Number two, you support your faith with the word of God. And number three, you overcome fear with the help of the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You have faith, Derek, but you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Todd? You have faith, but guess who helps you? The power of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. As Jesus said... And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. We went through this last month. That he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Jesus' promise has come to pass. Okay? He has... He will never leave you, Mikiala. He will not leave you an orphan. Amen? He will always come to you. This happens today by his spirit, through the Holy Spirit. This will help you, but you need to trust in that. You need to renew your mind in that. Then when those fears come, you trust in your title deed. You trust in who he is. Amen? You use your faith. You confront that fear. Amen? Amen. So what are you fearful of? What are your fears? Where do you have little faith when it comes to your fears? And where do you have great faith? Amen? Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I want you to just do an inventory of your heart and your mind right now. What are your fears? Trusting in the Lord Jesus is the only answer. When Jesus came down from heaven and led his life and ministry, when he was arrested, And where he knew where he was about to go and be crucified. The Bible also says that he was very anxious. He even asked the Father, take this cup from me, but your will be done. Basically saying, Father, I don't want to go through this. Just take this from me. Take this difficult thing away from me. Take this fear from me. Take the challenge away from me. 
But then he stopped and he said, your will be done. And he went to the cross just for us. That he could really wipe away every tear, bring peace. And this morning, if you need that peace, you need to cast your cares upon the Lord. And maybe you have fears this morning. If that's you, I just want to pray for you. You want to open your heart. You want to say, Lord, that's me. I want to just give that to you this morning. On the count of three, I just want you to just look up at me. Ready? One, two, three. See you. Thank you. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you. Thank you. I see you right there. I want you just to lift up your hand right now. Just close your eyes. Just come in agreement with this prayer. Lord, I have fears, Lord. It goes beyond my own capacity, Lord. I have fears that sometimes overwhelm me, Lord. I have fears of so many different things, Lord. And today I've heard your word, Lord. I've heard that I have faith. I've heard that, Lord, that I have your word. And you are my title deed. You are here with me. You never leave me for forsake me. And, Lord, today I put my trust in you. Lord, I just place my fears, Lord God, and I just cast them away. You haven't given me a spirit of fear, but of love, of power first, the power to overcome, the power to love, and to have a sound mind. And that sound mind gives me peace. That sound mind through your power, Lord God, overcomes the fear and dispels the fear. That power that you have given me, Lord God, can displace all fears from every area, from every enemy, from every hurt, Lord. And today I stand in that truth. I stand in that title deed. I stand in that faith, that evidence, Lord God, that today, Lord God, I have the power to overcome the fear. Your power, Lord God. Oh Lord, today I surrender to you. And today I declare, Lord God, that I have victory over the fears. I have victory over all things that come against me. I have victory, Lord God, in my heart, in my life, in my mind, will and emotions, my soul, Lord God. And I praise you and I give you the glory and honor because the fruit that's going to come out of it is going to just be amazing, Lord God that I can share, that I can be like Timothy and not be ashamed of the gospel, not be ashamed to share where I've been and where I have gone. Today, Lord God, today, Lord God, I praise you. Today, I give you all the glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Woo, give it up. Amen. So, here's your challenge. Go out and tell somebody. Don't keep it to yourself. Share that with somebody. Maybe going through fears. Amen. I love you. God bless. I've seen days where it seems like my nights won't end. Every dream that I had has been lost in the wind But your words brought me back to the truth Life begins and will end with you So I'll trust that my life will be safe in your hands As I stand